As we head into our third election with Donald Trump on the ballot, one thing is clear. The polls just keep underestimating him. So far in 2024, Trump is beating Joe Biden in almost every national poll and every swing state poll. But imagine waking up the day after the election and realizing that the polls underestimated Trump again, even with his current polling lead. In 2020, Trump was underestimated in 46 out of 50 states. So we did the math, and we're going to look at what would happen if the current polls underestimated Trump with the same margins they did in 2024. First, we are going to look at the states that are safe for Joe Biden, even factoring in the hypothetical Trump underestimation. These are the states where, in our scenario, Joe Biden will win with a margin greater than 9%. First up is the District of Columbia. Not surprisingly, DC is safe for Joe Biden. Not only is it hyper-urban, but it voted for Biden with an 85% margin in 2020, and DC is actually one few areas where Trump's support was overestimated by 1.75%. Next is Hawaii. I feel like Hawaii could actually surprise us in this election by drifting closer toward likely D due to the fumbling of the Hawaii fires by the Biden administration. Trump was underestimated here in 2020 by 3.7%, which in our analysis could place him losing the state by 32%. Next is the home of Bernie Sanders, Vermont. Vermont underestimated Trump by 3.28% in 2020, which still places Trump losing by 35% to Joe Biden in 2024. Maryland is another place where Trump was overestimated by 3.5%, which could place Joe Biden winning the state by a whooping 26%. Interestingly, this election could be one where the state's votes in a Republican senator but supports a Democrat for president. In California, the polls were almost exactly right in 2020, underestimating Trump by only 0.24%. This would place Trump losing by 20% against Joe Biden in this deep blue state. In Joe Biden's home state of Delaware, Trump was underestimated by 4.23% in 2020, and in this scenario, Trump would end up losing to Joe Biden by almost 19%. In New Jersey, Biden is currently polling at 21%. However, Trump was underestimated by 3% in 2020, and so this state could won by Joe Biden with a commanding 18% of the vote. Similarly, in Massachusetts, polls show Trump losing by 20%, but in 2020, he was underestimated by 2.5%, which could put him losing the state by 70.5%. Lastly, in 2020, the polls in Illinois were almost dead on, and in this hypothetical, Biden would beat Trump with 10.5% of the vote. Our Dem safe state gives Joe Biden 121 electoral votes. If Biden getting a 9% margin of victory or higher in a state makes it a safe state, then in the real 2020 results, this means Joe Biden ended up getting 212 electoral votes from safe states, which means in this hypothetical, he is down by a colossal 91 electoral votes. Ouch. Moving on to our safe Republican states. First up is Ruby Red, Wyoming, where Trump was underestimated by 11.9% in 2020, which would give Trump an incredible 82% of the vote later this year. Next is coal country, USA, West Virginia. Trump was similarly underestimated by 16% in 2020, which based on current polls and would place him beating the current president with a 52% margin. In North Dakota, Trump was underestimated by 14%, which could land Trump with a 51% margin over Joe Biden. In Oklahoma, Trump get 11% more of the vote than his polls predicted. If the margin remains true, Donald could beat Biden this year by 39%. In Tennessee, Trump was underestimated by 9%, and in our scenario, Trump will currently win with a 42% margin. In Idaho, Trump was underestimated by 12%, and in this hypothetical, he will get a 41% margin of victory over Biden. In South Dakota, Trump got 13% more of the vote than the polls predicted, and if that trend stays the same, he will win the state with 39% more votes than Joe. In Kentucky, Trump got 9.5% more of the vote than polls suggested, and right now that would place him with a 38.5% vote margin over Joe Biden. In Arkansas, Trump is up 33%, and with his 2023% underestimation, factor in Trump would receive a 36% margin later this year. In Montana, things are shaping up in a very interesting way. You may remember that in 2020, polling averages had Montana as a lean or likely Republican state and the averages show Trump only winning by around 5%. Well, Trump ended up actually winning by a strong 11% margin. 
if we applied that same margin in today's polls, Trump would do even better, crushing Joe Biden by 33%. In Missouri, Trump got 7.5% more votes than the polls suggested he would, which today could look like him beating Biden with a 25% margin. Indiana was once a swing state that Obama won in 2008, but today in our scenario, Trump crushes Obama's former VP with a 26% vote margin. Turning to the Deep South, in Alabama, Trump's voters beat the polls by almost 6%, which would give Trump a 26% margin of victory in this election. In Nebraska, Trump did better than the polls by 9%, and today that would give him a 25% margin of victory in Nebraska, a state that is critical to do well in because they allow each of their congressional districts to use their electoral votes for whoever their district votes for. In a close election, Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District and Maine's 2nd Congressional District would make or break the election. Utah is a state that has been somewhat Trump's averse, though even more Democrat averse. In 2020, Trump beat the polls by 10%, and today an election in the Mormon capital of the world would have Biden losing by 23%. In South Carolina, polling data had Trump 4.5% lower than his vote margin. And in this race, that could mean a 60% to 40% victory for the former president. In Kansas, the polls underestimated Trump by 4%, which would place Trump beating Joe by 19%. In Iowa, Trump was underestimated by almost 7% in 2020, and he could win this one-time Obama state by 18% if the trend continues. In Mississippi, the polls were almost exactly accurate, and current polls shows Trump beating Biden 59% to 41%. The one iconic swing state of Ohio is a state where Trump beat the polls by 7% in 2020, and right now polls are showing Trump with a commanding 10% lead over Biden. If the trend held, this would mean a 70% margin of victory for Trump and probably the end of an era for Ohio's swing state status. Alaska is another state where polls showed Trump barely winning, and then on election day, Trump pulled out a solid win with a 10% margin of victory in Alaska. If Trump beats the polling by 3.5% like he did last time, Trump could be looking at a 56% to 44% split in favor of him in November. Louisiana is one of the few states where Joe Biden was actually underestimated in the polls, and Joe beat the polls by almost 2%. If this trend held, Joe could expect to only lose by 13%. Texas was thought to be a swing state in both 2016 and 2020, but in both of those cases, Trump proved the polls wrong and in 2020, Trump won with a respectable 5.5% vote margin, beating the polls by almost 4.5%. If this trend held, Trump's current polling margin of 8% could transform into a 12.5% vote margin in November. Lastly, in Maine's 2nd District, Trump outperformed the polls by 7.5% and Trump is currently beating Biden there in the polls by an incredible 17%. If that swing stays, this means Trump will win the district by 24.5%. As you can tell, Republicans have way more solid states than Democrats. Though Democratic safe states tend to have more electoral votes. Either way, these safe states give Trump 189 electoral votes, not including Nebraska's 2nd district. Many of these states like Alaska, Montana, and Texas were states once thought to be in play for the Democrats, but are not shaping up to be so in this cycle. Up next is our likely D states. These are states where Biden would get a victory margin between 5 and 9%. First up is Oregon, where Trump beat the odds by a strong 4.3% and could make Biden stare down a narrow 54% to 46% victory in the Pacific Northwest. In Colorado, Biden actually outperformed his 2020 polls by 1.5% and gives him a little breathing room in the rocky state with a potential 8% margin of victory over Trump. In Maine, Trump did better than his polling numbers by 3.2%, which could boost him to a mere 7.7% deficit in Maine, which would be more than enough for Trump to win Maine's 2nd district, earning him one electoral vote from the state. Next is Rhode Island, where Trump massively overperformed his polling numbers by almost 10%, and if the pattern held true, Trump would only lose America's smallest state by 7%. In Washington state, Trump beat his polls by 3%, and he could end up losing by an even smaller margin in 2024 with a 6.7% loss. In New Mexico, Trump outperformed by 1.5% in 2020, which could have him looking at only a 6.5% loss to Joe Biden in this border state. Lastly, and maybe one of the most surprising states on this list, in 2020, Trump beat his polls in New York by 6%, and if those figures stay the same this year, 
Trump would lose his home state 47% to 53%, which would make it the closest presidential election in New York since 1988. These states in total add up to 70 electoral votes for the Democrats, excluding Maine's 2nd district, and every single one of them would have been in the safe column in 2020 with the exception of Maine. For the likely Republican states, there are 6 total, but these 6 should give Democrats chills because these 6 states are all 2020 swing states, and I mean every last one of them. Up first is Florida, which has been trending more and more Republican, and Governor Ron DeSantis even had a 20-point blowout landslide victory in 2022. In 2020, Trump beat his polls by 5.5%, which would place Florida with nearly a 9% vote margin in favor of Trump in 2024. Next is Wisconsin, where Trump beat the odds by 7.5% in 2020 and would give him a solid margin of victory at 8.5% in Wisconsin and giving Trump a critical flip. In the Grand Canyon state, Trump outperformed his polls by 1.6% which could position Arizona to return to the Republican Party and give Trump a 7% margin of victory over Joe Biden and flipping another state for the Donald. In our estimation, based on Trump getting 2% more of the vote than the polls promised in North Carolina, Trump would receive a 7% vote margin in this key state and keeping North Carolina in the Trump column. In Michigan, Trump beat the polls by 3.12% in 2020, which would land him getting a 7% margin of victory in 2024 and flipping another state. The last one in the likely Republican category is Nevada, which has been drifting further and further right and if Trump is able to replicate his 1.9% overperformance in his election, he will beat Biden 53% to 47% later this year and gaining another flip. These states add up to 88 electoral votes for Donald Trump. And if you are keeping track at home, these likely states combined with Trump's solid Republican states would be enough to put him over the top and into the White House with 277 electoral votes. But just wait, it gets even worse for Biden. First up is a shocker, Connecticut. If Trump outperforms by 6.23% in Connecticut like he did in 2020, it would turn the current polls of 11% into an actual 4.7% vote margin. This would be the closest presidential election in Connecticut history since 1948 and the best performance by the Republican since 1988. Next is New Hampshire, where if Trump beat the polls again by 4%, he could end up losing the state 52 to 48, a huge improvement to his 7-point loss in 2020. Another surprising one is Virginia, which recently elected a Republican governor. Trump overperformed here in 2020 by 1.7% and current polls have him barely losing by 4.3%, which could make for a slim Trump loss of 51% to 49%. This would be a huge improvement of Trump's 54 to 44 loss in 2020. In Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District, Biden outperformed the polls by about 2%. Surprisingly, there is no polling data available for the district. But the Cook Political Report places this race as likely D and CNN has them rated as a toss-up. For argument's sake, we will put Nebraska's 2nd District in the lean Democratic column. Lastly is Minnesota, where polls had Trump a half a percent lower than his vote total in 2020. Our estimations would place him at a narrow loss of only 2.3% in this traditional Democratic state, and we would see a real chance for Trump to jump in the lead here before November. These states represent 35 electoral votes and Democrats can't afford to lose a single one if they are going to keep Trump out of the White House for the next four years. If Trump won all of these states and all of the states in the Republican category, he would win in a landslide with 346 electoral votes and leaving only 192 electoral votes for Joe Biden. Sadly for Democrats, there are only two states in the lean Republican column and they need all of them plus some from the likely Republican column to win. First up is Pennsylvania, where Trump overperformed by 2%. And if the current polls are to be believed, this would give Trump a 3% victory over Biden and all of Pennsylvania's 19 electoral votes. Lastly is Georgia, where the polls were basically correct. If that stays the same, right now Trump is beating Biden by roughly 5% in the state, and so we could expect Trump to win by about what the polls are saying. If the polls are underestimating Trump at the same rate they have been, the Democrats are in for their biggest defeat since 1988 and Trump would win the popular vote for his first time. Using the same logic for the scenario, Trump was expected to lose the popular vote in 2020 by 7.2% but outperformed this figure by 2.7%. 
Current polls have Trump winning the popular vote by 1.7%, and if the same polling errors continue, we can expect Trump to win outright by 4.4%, or roughly 52% to 48%, which would be the biggest popular vote margin for a Republican in 36 years. So what do you think? Are Trump and the Republicans in for a red wave, or are the polls just finally done underestimating the orange man? Let me know in the comments below. Cheers.